Hi guys, today is day 5 and we'll still work on the alpha generation. The goal of this video is to show you how I created an alpha that will allow us to predict the variation from now to 100 candles later. And that with a 62% of accuracy. And so let's explain now our new signal. This signal is able to predict with a 60% accuracy the variation from now to 100 candles later. And to be more precise, it's not a 60% accuracy on the variation. It's a 60% accuracy on the way of the variation, obviously. The goal is to bring some medium term information, okay? We have the market regime and now we have the medium term information. So let's go again on the Jupyter notebook and explain a bit what we have done. This video will be very quick compared to the previous one because we will follow the same syntax and so you know already a lot of things. So we import the data, we create the target which is the future returns but it's very important to insist on this point. It's not the normal return, it is the log return. And why we have chosen the log return? It's because the log return has more statistical properties and the variation are higher, okay? So it will allow our algorithm to adjust its weight more easily. So the computation for the target is really simple. We take the close price, okay? We apply the log and we do the variation, okay? The close price for n candle later, that's why we put a minus in the shift because if we put just shift n, it will take the candles 100 period ago and not 100 period later, okay? And so it's a simple percentage of variation. And then we create the target, we create the features. There we can see that we do not have a lot of features and it's quite normal because obviously we need to put only medium term or long term features. What I mean? I mean that if you put a lot of information about the current condol or just the previous condol, like for displacement, gap, or I don't know, condol information uh, and so on, you will not have good results because you will have a lot of noise in the model. And it's quite obvious because now you're trying to predict something very, very deep in the time, okay? That is far away from now. So this information that will help us in very short term prediction will not help us now. It will just bring some noise. So that's why I have chosen the rolling ADF, Kama market regime. So the log transform, but with higher time frame and the volatility at 100 periods at 200 periods and so on. Then I create the train sets. I specify my features and my targets. I make a quick correlation. And as we can see there, we have the same results as for the previous one. So the three there are quite correlated to each other, but this one is also correlated to the target, but not too much as the three there. And this one is just not correlated to the target. Then we have the features importance. And as we can see, the best features is generally the same, like a very long term return, a very long term volatility, etc. Okay. And we have always good Chaplay value, which is a good sign for the features important. Then we create the model and this time is a regression. So all of that is the same thing as uh, before, okay? We just need to change our random forest classifier into a random forest regressor. You can try also different model like an SVR. You can try a simple linear regression. You can try really the model that you want, okay? We have worked with the random forest, so I will keep it. But obviously on your side, you can test as many models that you want and it is there that you need to make all your tests, okay? For example, if there I want to try an SVR, it's not the wrong way to do, it's the good way. You need to make all your tests there, okay? After that, you can't come back. There, it's the only place that 
you can go forward, go backward, go forward and make adjustment. Okay. It's doing the research part. Once you have created your trading strategy, it's good or not. It is good. You go forward. If it's not good, you just put this strategy to the bin. That's why I insist there. Then I do some prediction. And when I do a regression, generally, I want to plot the true values and my predicted values to be sure that we are not predicting something very wrong. For example, if you have a linear regression, which is based on the mean squared error, if you work on percentage, it can happen very often that your regression will predict always a constant close to zero because this model found that it is the best way for him to reduce its error, okay? But for us, it's not the best thing to do. That's why I want to plot my predictions to be sure that we have something reliable, okay? And as we can see there, we have something good. But the only thing with this graph is that we can't just say, okay, the model is good or the model is not good. So to add more information, we will transform these continuous values into punctual values, okay? So we will say that if the value is above zero, the new value is equal to one. And if it's below, the new value is equal to zero. And it will allow us to create dummy variables. And so compute confusion matrix, accuracy score, F1 score, and so on, like for the previous target. And as you can see there, the accuracy is equal to 62%, which is very, very, very high, okay? Obviously, the mean absolute error is equal to 0 0.07. We need to keep that in mind for the next part. But a 62% is really good, but we need to be careful. Here, we have not a lot of data, okay? We have enough data, okay? Like 1,500 approximately, but what we need to do is test our algorithm on other market conditions because maybe it's just on this market condition that we were able to predict very well the next variation. So here we have associated this period to the mean absolute error of 0 0.07. What we can do is do a robustness test like for the previous video and we'll see on other data sets how this algorithm works. And as we can see, we have an average uh, mean absolute error of 0 0.07 also. So it's quite encouraging. We need to go further for now, but if we had some more time, a very interesting things that we could do was like test how the accuracy will vary, how the MAE will vary depending on the target, for example, now we have gold results for 100 candles, but let's try with the target between 95 candles and 105 candles. If we still have good results, it means that we have something robust. But if once we just use a 99 candles instead of the 100, we have very poor results. If we take 101 candles, we have amazing results. It means that we have too much variation in the results depending on something that should not have this variation. So it's not good. It means that it's not a robust strategy. The other thing that we can do is just create a simple trading strategy with that. Okay. Like if it's positive, we buy. If it's negative, we sell. And once we have that, we can use the template of the AlphaQuan program to create this sort of graph, okay? That highlight the probability of overfitting, the probability to have something profitable and so on. So that was all for this video. It was shorter than the previous one. And tomorrow we'll work on the short term variation. The goal for now is we have the market regime, we have a medium term variation. Now we'll try, even if it's much harder to find a short term variation. And the goal will be obviously in the last day to combine them to obtain something interesting.